Ryan Deegan comes in with a second place finish in his heat race. That'll uh, transfer you on now to the main event. Yeah, Johnny's riding good in the rough, the rough part of the track, and I was making a few mistakes just from being being a little cold out. So, uh, but in the main, I think I can get him. The dirt is flying at Daytona. Brian Deegan gets a great start. So does Tim Ferry, but down already under Ferry. Slow start. He's mired back in that pack as they come out of the big curve there. You'll see he's seemingly by yourself, and you're not in trouble of getting knocked down. So there's Brian Deegan with Tim Ferry, who won this event last year, right behind him. And can Deegan and Ferry disappear? And Ferry was really going to bring the crowd to its feet again as he challenges for the lead. Loses some momentum. Well, Ferry struggles through the big jumps at Bichon on the Kawasaki, but he doesn't seem to be panicked by it yet. Look at how deep some of these berms are developing. You should be seeing it right now as he's riding alongside him. Pat. Wave like, hurry up, as if they're not already riding 10 tenths. That's Deegan's tuner. Mix of marks from Honda to Suzuki to Yamaha to Kawasaki. Playing it back on the packs and continues on. Here's Tim Ferry and Deegan battling for second. Here's Deegan hanging in there. Watch what happens. He comes up the backside of Deegan and look at Deegan goes off course. Brian Deegan on the 25 thinking maybe he could make a run at Ferry, you can see the gap. Charlotte Motor Speedway, directly in front of the main grandstand, much like this, and I'm sure Bailey will do the course. Five. Supercross by Honda here at day two. Oh, Ferry almost looked like he lost the bars there for a second. And he's going to see one more time, a little bit more here, Steve, to give himself a shot a little later on before they get back around to the finish line jump. A few turns away from the finish. And a checkered flag for Mikhail Pichon as they leave Daytona. Ferry will come home in third. Stay with us, everyone. We'll be back to talk to the winners and more here at Daytona. Right next to Mikel Pichon, who wants to take up the points lead, and they're off. Carson shot by him into that whoop section. All the way back in 10th place. Well, that's the next closest competitor. Pichon gets a terrible start. He was as far back as 15th in the beginning. Brian Deegan passing Yenser. Because of the, uh, the track design this week, the soil is making it thick, but once he's gotten there, he... Here goes Deegan as he leaps by. Barry Karsten for second place. Karsten number 31. There's Deegan number 25. Got it. As soon as I opened my mouth, she made that mistake. Now Karsten rolling through there, starting to make a lot of mistakes. Our field strider Deegan number 25. These guys are in a complete different class. You see him using that path, so pulling away. These guys are still starting to do the double. Deegan, though. Oh, Deegan doing the move on Karsten. And it cuts in front. Here comes Deegan. And number 31, Barry Karsten. Karsten, let's go down to Marty Reed. Well, guys, I've got to tell you, the Chaparral team has got to be ecstatic. Not very far behind Brian Deegan and Scotty Sheen. Making a move, trying on Deegan. His best finish is sixth place this year, and it is Scotty Sheik, number 26. Place. Oh, I think so. You can see how close. Oh, Sheik cased it on that double right there. The checkers for Mikel. Deegan, a very fine performance for third, holding in there. Grath trying to bring him back to earth. The 250 main is next. Out in front, here in Tampa Bay, looking for his fifth win of the season. Third place now is John Dowd is in front of number 25, Brian Deegan. Already starting to pull away a little bit, so it appears as though Dowd is a little bit faster pace. He's got a long distance back to number seven, John Dowd. Dowd, though, might have the laps enough to catch him. More consistent now. We've got the front two riders running all alone. What's that like, David Bailey? Or injury and still come out with a dominating win here in Tampa. As he starts to pull away in that points race from John Dowd. Scott Sheik, though, and Brian Deegan. 30-second board is down, and they're going in any time they're gone. 47, but let's see who takes the first corner. Pichon on the inside, looking to wrap up this East-West series as Deegan is in second. And see all the air time they're getting off that triple, and there you can see the lead that Wyndham has. Looks right behind number 25, and we'll see who will end up the top five. Back to the Trans World Dome in St. Louis as we've got a battle for third. Brian Deegan and Nathan Ramsey behind Kevin Wyndham. Second and third right here. Whoa, 
Corey DeBar. He's looking faster. Yeah, he covered that perfect. Deegan tried to park him a little. It's hard to crash and then get your, rep, your rhythm established again. Now these guys going back and forth. That's our final at Denver. The checkers flag for Kevin Windham. For one more race anyway of clinching that 125 Western title. The Suzuki point standings first of all in the 125 East. The unofficial listing of course was shown already. Five main event from the Los Angeles Coliseum. Windham gets out of the gate pretty good. But on the inside they get sandwiched and flying through the air is David Pingree. Gentlemen, a pretty interesting story. He's the number one rider, 125 rider, Supercross wise out of France. Wyndham has been so fast through the whoops tonight. We'll see if he can make a move here. He's past Ron Cotta. Oh! oh! Brian Deacon, number 28, 24 Ryan, or uh, Robbie Rader. Rader has got a battle on his hands from an unexpected rider, Brian Deegan. Whoa, what an upset of events right here for Deegan. Rainer, though, hanging in. They're taking Deegan out, but why get ugly right here? He's still got a shot at the lead. Maybe they both could have gone down. His mechanics said his arm's been pumping up. i got to think that's what's happening to him now. So we'll pass into second place. And the amazing thing is not very far behind these guys. It may start popping into view. It's Wyndham. It's all the stops. He's got Ramsey in front of him, and there you see Villain making the move on Robbie Rainer. Here's our leader, Brian Deegan. Villeman, number 125. Ramsey, 38. Rainer, 24. And Kevin Wad, the checkered flag, and Deegan lets his bike fly into the air. Standing with his arms in the air, Deegan just wants his bike off the finish line. Jump, hug by Kenny Watson. Handlebars. And the excited win as we see him launch the bike at the finish line. Hey, his first victory. Let's get out of Davy Cove. All I have to say, the first time I won at Supercross, I promised myself I would do something that no one else has done yet. Because we're out here and we mean business and we're going to mix it up with those factory guys. And me and Kenny have been working real hard and my trainer Mark Smith, my dad flew out. Thanks for coming out, him and my brother. Glad they're here to see me kick everyone's ass. Okay, thanks Brian. Here's the battle for third. Moto Triple X rider, Brian Deegan, number 28. You know, Deegan's the type of rider that he may be a little inconsistent throughout the year, but it's seeing right now, he is fast, he's a great jumper. This track, obviously, is going to, I would expect him to be tough. Here comes Deegan to the inside. Deegan. Or wasn't quite close enough entering that section. That time he was and made the move. Going to have a tidal wave effect going back and forth as they watch the leaders. Very interesting track from a fan standpoint. Scott Sheik, race with Scott Sheik, a valuable third, David Pingree, and Brian. You know, one third of the field dropped out of that first moto basically because of the heat. Yeah. Finishing 27th back to 40. Those are the guys that need the extra bucks. Yeah, the firemen and, and the organizers of the race for what they do for these riders, too. They're probably the most risky. Do a great job out here of keeping this track dialed in. Listening to us down, they watered this section between the races, but they were careful not to make it muddy out there. This is the first time he's seen that track. He's like a golfer remembering every stroke. Damon Huff and the checkers. He's got the sweep on the day.